I'm Tracy. Thank you so much for joining me. I just got back from a six week RV trip. We went to Florida and then North Carolina to see my grandbabies. And I'm so happy to be back in my sewing room. I love to go, but I'm just as giddy to get back. So we're going to do an upcycling project with a white denim jacket. Going to turn this into just a $7 thrifted jacket into something that you would find in a boutique for hundreds of dollars, very couture with some beadwork. So we're gonna dye it pink, do some distressing and some beadwork. Now this is an XL Nine West brand. It's 98% cotton, which I found is enough natural fabric. The dye I use, I need natural fabric like cotton, silk, linen, things like that, wool. And so 98% is always enough, I have found. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is distress this, make it look a little ragged. You know, this is really gonna be pretty shabby chic because the frayed edges will be shabby and then the pretty beadwork will be very chic. So I just need a small cutting board and I use a box cutter. This is a Slice brand box cutter. I'll put a link in my description, but any box cutter will do. So I'll show you how I do that. So basically, I'm just going to distress most of the edges along the bottom, along the pockets, the collar, the sleeves, and then I'll just do sort of a little special distressing right up here in this section, and I'll show you that. So I just take my cutting board, and I started this a little bit. I don't know if you can see that, but I just slip this cutting board underneath the edge that I want to distress, and I just start making slices. Now, sometimes I go all the way through. Now this is a double layer. On this one, I'm not really going all the way through. I don't want this. There's a um, distressing technique called destroyed, which can be really cool. I don't want this destroyed where there's big holes and hanging pieces of fabric. I just want to roughen up the edges. And so I just start off kind of light. And if you're kind of new to this and haven't done it before, just start off light and see what you like. You may not even want to distress your jacket at all. So I'm going to go along this edge and then do the same along the bottom. And then I'll come back and show you where else I distress it. Okay, so. Now I have this all distressed except for the section I'm going to do here. And I distressed down the front by the buttons here. And then I distressed all along the bottom edge. And then I did the bottom of the sleeves. I did the collar. The collar is a little more subtle than I did the rest of it. And then, did I show you the front pocket? And then I did a little bit on the side pocket. Okay, so now I just want to do kind of a holy little distressing right here, and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, the first thing I need to do is take my cutting board it's a little gloomy here today. I know this is showing up kind of dark and not great lighting. I have a new camera I'm practicing with. I know with my Android phone, my videos aren't the sharpest and more, most clear, but I'm studying a new camera and hopefully everything will be a lot more crisp and clear for you. Okay, so I just want to do sort of a little rectangle shape just right here above the pocket and outside the collar. And so I'm just going to take my box cutter and I'm just going to lightly just distress in sort of that rectangle shape. And I start out light because I never know, this has a little elastic in it. Elastic is a little harder to distress. Now, if this was pure cotton, I wouldn't have to press very hard at all. But with this elastic, I have to press hard. And until I know how hard I have to press, I start out light. And I just keep 
going over it until I like what I see. Okay. And that's what this looks like. A few holes go all the way through, but most of them don't. Now, a lot of the distressing is actually, I don't have to do any more to this because a lot of that will happen in the washer and dryer. It will accentuate, accentuate all the frame. Okay, so I have my jacket distressed how I want it, and now I want to dye it pink. And I'm going to kind of blab on a little bit about Rit Dye because there's so many little tips and tricks about it. I use Rit Dye that is for natural fabrics like cotton, silk, linen, wool, things like that. There is Rit Dye for synthetic fabrics. I've never used it, so I can't really comment on how well that works. So if you're going to use Rit Dye for natural fabrics, just make sure you have a natural, like a cotton jacket. So I am going to use Petal Pink and Cherry Red. Now, this is where my experience kind of comes in because I have failed, like I wanted to dye something red one time and it didn't turn out red with this Cherry Red. It turned out hot pink. Well, I loved the hot pink, but it wasn't the red I was looking for. So now whenever I want pink and want it a little extra vibrant, I add some cherry red. So I'll take you to my wash machine and um, show you about how much. I'll use this whole bottle of pink and then probably about a fourth of the cherry red. So let's go up to the wash machine and I'll show you how I fill it and things like that. Okay, I just want to say one more thing before I get to the laundry room. And that is this would be the time if you want a matching set, something to go with a jacket, this would be the time to dye that. So maybe you have a pair of shorts. These are, these are all cotton or a high cotton blend. So maybe you have a pair of shorts that you would want to wear with a jacket or a skirt, pants. These are very wrinkled. <laughs> a top, you know, gloves, hat, scarf. This would be the time to throw it in with your jacket and you're sure to have the same dye lot and pretty close to matching. Okay, so there's my laundry room. I almost made it there without having to say something else, but I do wanna throw this out there. I have gotten questions over the years, does dyeing in your wash machine ruin your wash machine or your regular clothes that you're going to launder after that? I haven't had any issue, but what I do is after I'm done dyeing this, I will run an empty load with hot soapy water just to clean my washer and then the next load of laundry that I will do won't be whites it'll be darks and I haven't had any issue okay be sure to shake these well because if it's been sitting on the shelf for a long time it does get thicker down towards the bottom and you just want to make sure you get everything when you are pouring this in so the first thing I'm going to do I haven't started my washer or anything is pour the whole bottle of Petal Pink in. Now, the more dye you use, the deeper, richer the color. Now, if you were going to dye a bunch of stuff with your jacket, like pants and maybe scarf and gloves, you may want to double up on this color, but I am only doing the jacket, so one bottle is plenty and a little bit of this. It has this little protective cap that get your fingers all messy when you pull it off. Now I am just going to pour about fourth of a bottle of this in. Okay. Okay. Now I'm just going to start my machine. I'm going to use warm. I'm going to use all the settings I do for my normal laundry, which is warm water. And mine says normal casual. And then I'm just going to start it and then I'm going to let that up fill up for five minutes before I throw my jacket in. I don't want to throw it right on top of that dye. I want that dye to be diluted when I throw my jacket in. So at least five minutes, I'll wait until I throw my jacket in. Okay, and so while my washer is filling up, 
I want to talk about drying this. So I want to be able to dry this because of the frame, the washer and dryer help that frame a lot. But in addition to using the dryer to help with the frame, I want to help set, I feel like a hot setting on a dryer helps set that dye so that when you wash it, it's um, more adhered to the fabric and won't come out in your wash after you've dyed it. Um, so I have already washed this in cold and I line dried it. It's an XL and I am going to dry it in my dryer with my fingers crossed that it doesn't shrink too much. That's why I would recommend getting an extra large size, a size larger than you would normally buy if you are going to dry it. Okay, so it's been about four minutes. I pushed pause and opened up my lid. That's kind of what the color is looking like. I don't know if you can see that very well. It's very bright. <laughs> And I am just going to throw my jacket in there, close the lid, and let the washer do its thing. Okay, my washer has stopped. Let's see what we have. Hot pink. There's the distressing. Very cute, just what I wanted. Now look at the stitching. That's something you have to keep in mind. Um, the stitching must not have been cotton. Do you see that it's kind of white? I think it looks cool, but it didn't dye because it's not cotton. It's probably a polyester thread or something. Okay, so now I'm going to put it in the dryer. And I never dry anything by itself because it just kind of sticks to the side of the dryer. I throw like a towel in with it so that it tumbles and dries faster. So I'm just going to set this on a hot setting, 40 minutes, and see what it looks like. Okay, it's out of the dryer. It might have shrunk a little bit, but still fits me great. And now we're going to do bead work. Okay. I want to show you the beads and embellishments that I'm going to sew on here before I show you where I sew it and how I sew it. So I have a tub of beads and a few little extras in here. They're pearl type beads and I just collect similar types of beads in different tubs like these would be all pearl type. Um, I have another tub with more rhinestones and that would be really pretty on here. You do whatever you want. So I'm just going to use various sizes of these pearl type beads. And I wanted a shiny rhinestone type bead. Now I couldn't, I looked on Amazon, I looked all over the place. I really couldn't find what I wanted. So I went to eBay. Now these kind of look vintagey. I don't know how old they are. They're, they weren't $4.99 for me. They were like $2.99. They weren't loose beads but what they were were beads sort of on this ribbon and very very loosely stitched onto this ribbon so I'm simply going to cut these off of here and sew onto my jacket well let's see. okay so that's what I wanted I wanted sort of a rhinestone looking bead. Now these are plastic and they have a hole here and a hole here so that I can sew it onto my jacket and they're flat on the back. Now this has two different shapes. It has more of a round and more of an oblong sort of bead. And so, and I wanted it to match pretty closely to my jacket. So I'll be cutting all those off using those, so the pearls, the rhinestone looking hot pink beads, and then just to break up those two, I don't want just two beads, but I don't want a big hodgepodge. So I found this bracelet and it's just among my beads. My intention was to snip it 
and use the beads. So I'll sprinkle those throughout. And I also have this necklace. <laughs> it's really cute, but it weighs probably two pounds. It's just never been comfortable to wear, but it has like little clear rhinestones and little silver beads. And I might sprinkle some of those throughout as well. Okay, and then I'm going to use hot pink thread. And my plan is to sew beads and embellishments mainly on one side and just sprinkle a few here and there, other places on the jacket. But I want to start down towards the bottom of the side I choose and just start sewing things on and then I'll get thicker and thicker up to the shoulder and down the arm a little bit and then I'll get thinner and thinner again with my beading. Now I am going to do most of this sitting in my recliner watching TV because it will take me hours and that's one of my most favorite things to do is just relax with a cup of coffee and watch a movie or a series and just so I feel sort of productive and having fun at the same time. But I'm going to show uh, sew a couple on just to give you an idea of how I do that. Okay, here I am down at the bottom front of my jacket and I'm going to start about right here and I'm choosing a pearl type bead about that size. Now I'll just simply come in from underneath of the jacket and pull my thread and needle. This is doubled the thread is doubled and knotted and then I will just slide it through the bead my threads kind of wonky here here okay and then where I came up with that thread up through the coat I want to go almost on top of that or very close to so that a lot of the thread is hidden. If you go close to that hole each time, your thread isn't so noticeable. And so I'll do that, go through that hole probably three or four times. Okay, so I have my little pearl bead sewn on. Now I want to sew on this crystal type bead and it's the round one. And so I am going, so here's where my pearl one ended. I went ahead and just strung that thread over to my next. You can tie each one off individually if you want, individually, but it's going to take you a lot longer. So this one has two holes on each side and I'll put about three stitches in each and then I'll just move the thread over to my next one. Now when I get to like this necklace, I will just take my wire cutter and clip that ring off. And it has a little hole for sewing there and place that. So I don't know exactly where I'm going to place everything. And um, I'm not going to sit here at the table and do it because I wanna get in my comfies and sit on the couch and relax and do it. So when I show this to you when I'm finished, I'll put it on my mannequin and just give it a real close up, slow spin so that you can pause this tutorial if you want to see exactly where things are placed. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get this finished and I'll come back. Okay, as I'm sewing beads on, I just wanna make a couple notes. I did remove the pocket. I didn't want to deal with having to stick my hand in there and sew beads to the pocket. And then I took a piece of chalk and I did a very rough sketch of where I want the rest of my beads to go. So I made a little chalk line up through here and then up over the shoulder a little bit. And now I'll make three sort of lines. I'll fill this in with beads make three little lines kind of going down the back of the shoulder, bring it around, and I want there to be a clump of beads on the arm that trickle down. Now, here is the center of the sleeve because I can tell by the seam. 
I want everything to be shifted a little more forward so that you can see all the beads from the front when you're wearing the jacket, yet they're still going to be going down the sleeve. Here it is all finished. I added some extra little silver jewelry remnants to it. I added three little pearl type beads there and here on the arm. I added a little piece of jewelry to the other side of the collar. Now these rhinestone looking beads that I was talking about, you can find those if you're looking at the thrift store. A lot of times prom dresses, things like that, really fancy blouses have these type of beads on and you can just cut them off. Came all the way down to almost the bottom of the sleeve here. Very pretty. Now, um, here's what the inside looks like. Can you see that? All my stitching. Now I'm going to put it on and style it for you. So I would wear the jacket with something like this. And this is 100% thrifted. Some flowy pants, just kind of a sheer white tank top. I have, uh, even these are thrifted. Some neutral flats, super comfy and cute. And I wanted big hair for this look, just for fun. And I get these little hair pieces on Amazon. Maybe you do this, I don't know. But um, they're just for ponytails, basically. And they're on a ponytail holder and they're stretchy. And so I put the ponytail where I want it and then I just wrap this around it like twice and I have an instant big messy bun. My hair definitely is not this thick. Okay real quick I just want to touch on a couple things. This took me a whole weekend to um, sew all this on, on and off throughout the weekend. Now what a great project if you like to have something sitting by your chair or couch to grab and sew and just kind of kill some time or maybe you're bored, nothing's on TV. What a great little project to just keep by your chair and pick up when you want to. Um, the other thing is to clean this. What I would do, you can professionally clean, talk to your cleaners about it, hand wash it. But what I do is my wash machine has a hand wash cycle. I wash it on the hand wash cycle in cold and before I put it in my wash machine, I button it up and turn it inside out and I wash it by itself because there will be, you know, some, I don't want to say fading, but um, the dye will come into the water a little bit, but um, yeah, so just wash it by itself so the dye doesn't get on any other garments. Now I want to talk about one more and I'm going to show a picture of another denim DIY, something I made and sold a while back. And it was just a jean jacket that I cut the sleeves off and then just did some more like embellishing just right here. And I drooped some chains, distressed it, and you have a whole nother look, but a really cool project to sell or wear or give as gifts, whatever you like. So thank you so, so much for watching.